Hey everybody and welcome to another ActionFeatures.net Toy Talk Review. This should be our first one that goes up of the NECA Planet of the Apes line. This is something that they, uh, Keaton really got into the Planet of the Apes um, and it's kind of infected the rest of us with the huge love of these figures. Um, I really like the classic ones, but Keaton being so excited about the, these has got me excited about them too. So now we're going to add Planet of the Apes from NECA into our reviews. Um, but we'll, we'll buzz through them all as quick as we can and then just kind of keep it as a current thing as new figures come out. Today we're, we're playing catch up, and this is a Series 1 Dawn of the Planet of the Apes figure, the first release Caesar, with, with the war paint all over his face and such. Um, the packaging is clamshell packaging, which I'm not a humongous fan of clamshell packaging. I, I really don't like that you got to cut it open and you can't really put stuff back in and take it out. It's kind of a one-and-done type thing where you get it out of there and it's garbage. Uh, but... It's fine. I mean, it's something different from the, the classic. I'm so happy that the classic figures are open box, where you can put them back in, that I'd rather those be, put them in and take them out, than these be like that. This is more fitting to a current movie line, this kind of clamshell look. There's a paper insert in the back that has the Dawn of the Planet of the Apes logo, and a picture of Caesar and Koba, and it's got these little markings all over their faces. Um, it's kind of like a you know, white splattery type of thing going on there. Then we got a little piece up front here that features Caesar's name and the warnings and such. We've got Caesar twist tied into the package, his staff split into two pieces, because the staff is so large it wouldn't fit in here as one. And then you can see one of his extra hands and the other one is kind of tucked down below the little insert thing. The back of the packaging features this red and white kind of splattery motif with a little collect them all, an image of a gorilla with a gun, Caesar's window picture, things like that. And then we've got pictures of all the Series 1 figures, Caesar, Koba, and Maurice. Alright, there's one more time from the front before we get him out of there and take any look at him loose. Here is Caesar out of the box. Alright, let's talk about his extra hands and his accessory here first before we move on to the articulation and the figure itself. As you can see, we've got the gripping hands going right now. He also includes a set of more open, relaxed hands. They've got kind of that knuckles towards the ground thing that apes, chimpanzees have. These, you might want to, when you're switching out hands, I would always recommend maybe heating up some water and dipping them in the wa hot water for just a little bit before doing any changing. You just don't want to break these pegs off as you're doing the change, because they are a little tight, and you just want to make sure that you're not forcing them off, because you could break that peg off inside the hand, and that's bad news. Uh, all, of the, all, all four of the hands have this nice white paint app all over them that looks like kind of crackled war paint, the tribal paint, since he's got that war paint all over him, the hands have this as well. And if you accidentally get your hands kind of mixed up between him and Koba, you'll notice that Koba's extra hands have black fur on them, whereas Caesar's extra hands do not. They just have the, the paint all over them. So if you get your hands kind of mixed up when you're switching things around, just note that Caesar's hands themselves don't have any fur on the top of them for the war paint version. Uh, the staff comes in two pieces inside the package because it's so long it won't fit in the bubble had they just done one piece on it. I'm going to take this out of your hand, Caesar. I hope that's okay. Uh, it, it splits apart right there. There is a little uh, not a groove in here, and there's a little notch inside the hole. So that you, well, you just make sure when you're putting this together that you match those two things up. and You're not trying to force it onto there um, if, if that's not matching up. It's not just one straight peg that's going to fit right into the hole. You've got to make sure you match that up. The sculpt on this and the paint on this staff are really nice. There's like a nice wrapping, and it's actually like a different shade than the rest of it. It's got a nice uh, dry black wash all over it. It's just a really nice accessory. It looks like this staff has seen a lot of hunts. All right, the figure itself. Let's talk about his uh, articulation here first. He's got... I'm going to get him off of this little stand so we can move everything around. He's got ball-jointed ankles. They have a good range of movement. And he's got a... Hinged knee that also swivels where it inserts into the thigh, and then he's got a hinge or sorry a swivel at the top where the thigh plugs into this pelvis joint, the little waist joint area, and that's that that joint there is a, a hinge and uh, pivot as well where it's got the hinge inside on this ball, and then it also has a pivot where it plugs into the actual waist area. Now that articulation is kind of a little tough to work with sometimes because it's so hidden that this this first sculpt goes up pretty high, the one on the thigh. So you just got to kind of look for where this hinge is and then work it to where you want and then you can swivel the hip to get it to go where you want it to be in case you want the legs to swing out more, if you want them to go up and down more. Just watch to see that hinge inside there uh, and you'll be able to, to make it so they can either go up and down like that 
or kind of twist it and work it until you can get it to go more out. It's a little tough to work with that joint, but it is well hidden, and it does offer a good range of movement once you get the hang of it. And then he's got a ball jointed mid torso joint, and that has a great range of movement. It's well hidden by the fur line and his rib cage. It's not obtrusive and cut into the sculpt like some of the DC classics and things like that would be. Um, then he's got a hinged shoulder that is also mounted on a swivel. He's got the same deal at his elbow where it's a hinge, and then when it plugs into the lower arm, it's on a swivel. And again, it's really well hidden by this fur sculpt. Uh, you don't get a really giant obtrusive ball joint sticking out. The fur kind of comes up over the joint, which is really, really nice. And then the hands where they switch out, they're mounted on, little, uh, on, on these balls so they can go all over the place. Uh, they got a lot of nice movement in these wrists as well. And then the head itself is, I believe it's on a ball, but it's a really movable ball. It almost feels like it's a swivel and a ball joint because he's got a lot of up and down movement on this head, which is really, really nice. Um, I'm kind of losing it in the camera there, but you get the idea. It has a nice range of movement. And again, the fur is covering up a lot of that joint, which is really a really nice uh, thing, so you're not having these ugly joints sticking out everywhere. We're kind of talking about the sculpt as we're going here, but with all that uh, fur covering everything, give me a second here, I'll put him back in the stand so we can kind of turn him around. The sculpt itself is phenomenal. I mean, the, the way this fur covers up all those joints, like I said, uh, the look on the face is just really, really well done. It's a nice stoic look to, I'm gonna try and get this up here and zoom in just a little bit more. Sorry if I'm making you guys seasick. That head sculpt is just really, really nice. It's got a great stoic look to the face, like he's getting ready for the hunt. It's just really, really well done. Um, hang on, let me rest the deck down here, okay. Uh, the body itself, the, the sculpt, it's a good job of mimicking Caesar in different poses. So you can get him kind of hunched over as if he's kind of walking. But then you can also use that mid-torso ball joint to get him sort of his more upright, you know, on the leader type of pose. It, it really works well. Uh, the sculpted details, he also has the little um, birthmark thing here. You can see it there on his chest. All over, you, you see how well that fur is sculpted. Neca just really killed it with his sculpt. Um, Paint-wise, I don't have any problems with paint on mine. This is some of the best paintwork I've seen between an actual prototype, a hand-painted prototype, and a production figure. It really looks fantastic, like it's war paint over skin on his face and on the fur. Just a beautiful paint job. I didn't have any stray lines or any crazy things going on. The eyes themselves are just incredibly well painted. You get this great character in those eyes. Just really, really well done. I love, love the paint job on this figure. Just some comparisons here. Here is Caesar next to the original Rise of the Planet of the Apes, Haya Toys Caesar. As you can see, it's, it's a much better sculpt than that older figure was. As neat as this old Rise of the Planet of the Apes figure is, um, this just is, it kills it. It's not even close. Uh, so there's those two together. Then we'll put Caesar next to Koba from Series 1 in the paint, in the war paint version. You see Koba's got a more hunched over look to him, whereas Caesar's standing upright and strong and proud. And then we'll put Caesar next to his Series 2 counterpart, which is the non-war paint version of Caesar, but this time around he's got this angrier face. And I much prefer this version of Caesar's face to this one. This one's almost a little too angry and, and screamy and crazy, whereas this one is a perfect, I think, representation of how Caesar was in the movie, not overboard with the yelling. Uh, these these yelling sculpts are, are nice, but it's kind of a one-trick pony, like it's always got to be angry, whereas you can get a lot more character out of somebody that's not going overboard and just has this straight-up look. I really wish that they'd done this sculpt again with this paint job, like they'd re-released this figure another way where it was more of a normal look as opposed to the war paint. Although I do like the war paint, I think it's neat. Oh, and then last but not least, uh, here is Caesar next to a classic Planet of the Apes figure. So you can see what the difference in size and kind of body types are between... Oh, <laughs> I'm going a little too low there. What the size and the body types are between it and classic Poda. Uh, so, there you go. Alright, so let's take one last look at him here before we take him over to the couch and do the review. Hey everybody, and we're all three over here on the couch to give our thoughts on the first of our Planet of the Apes reviews. We've been doing more of these since Keaton's... What are you? The Ape Collector. The Ape Collector. He loves apes, as I said in the opening sequence, so 
just like our Batman animated reviews, Keaton will be down in the center for all of these because he collects these. And then, like, the couple of Ninja Turtle reviews that we've done. Yeah, no doubt. He'll be down here for those, too. Uh, as you saw in the opening sequence, today we're taking a look at Dawn of the Planet Apes Series 1, Caesar. And that's, this is known as, like, the war paint Caesar. Yeah. Um, let's give our thoughts on this packaging. Um, I like it. I do too. I, like I do prefer the classic Planet Apes packaging because you can put it right back in. You put it back in. Uh, this one you have to cut it open and destroy to get the figure yeah. out of there. Um, it is neat. I do like the illustrations and stuff, like the yeah. drawing and sort yeah. of like the the red, almost like a blood splattery type and thing. The and the windows on yes. the packaging. Yes. Yeah, the window. Yeah, what well, it's on the back here, right? No, it's, it's also front. on the front. Where's it at? Oh, it's on the. Oh, it's at the bottom. There. I see. Oh, yeah, you're right. Keaton really likes. And they both, they both like, but Keaton he loves the, uh, Rise of the Planet Apes and Dawn of the Planet Apes, and so he was noticing things that I didn't notice, and he, I, Blaze didn't notice, yeah. like the little window image from the first movies on his packaging a couple times, and then we've got like some biohazardy type look things, and it's got the pictures of Koba and mm, Caesar, and it's got like war paint things yes. kind of drawn over it. It is really neat yeah. design for packaging. It also um, has. Yeah, and then you got pictures of the three other figures in the line, which is cool always. Um, the only draw drawback, I, I, like I said, is that it, you can't close it. Um, so let's talk about the figure himself. Uh, first of all, accessory-wise, he comes with his big long spear, which comes in two pieces, right. and you put it together. Uh, be careful, once you have it together, not to break it. Um, yeah, it seems like that would be an mm -hmm. issue. It would be an issue. To, some breakage would happen if you're not careful. But it stays together well, and it's nicely painted, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, the scale-wise, is pretty cool, having it so much bigger yeah. than, than Caesar. Um, as far as extra hands go, he comes equipped with, uh, I think he's got the, yeah, he's got open hands in the package, and he's got closed hands that you can switch out. These are kind of tough to switch out. You might need to boil some water to you know, soften up the hands if you mm -hmm. want to do some switching around. Um, but it is nice that he has options. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you can do just like normal standing there Caesar, or you can do closed hand Caesar. The figure itself, like we said in just a second ago, it's the war paint version. Yeah, like more towards the beginning of the film. Yeah, what, now what do you guys think? I mean, do you prefer war paint version or do you prefer regular version? I think war paint is... Oh, wait, you can I would want regular. You like regular better? Because um, he's usually regular. That's true. Yeah, as cool as the war paint is, I like the regular as well. Here's the thing, is I also agree that I like a regular Caesar better, but, but it, as far as sculpt goes... I yeah. like his face. Like, I like the normal, just kind of... Not the screaming. Too. Not the screaming face. That's what. That's just the difference between them. I, I don't really like the screaming face as much, but I still want it regular. Yeah, I agree. Well, uh, there was also that figure that never was put in the line. Yeah, the, well, they, there was the two painted ones in that book, uh, the prototype versions of him and Koba with the normal faces where they were normal paint right. jobs. Mm -hmm. And hopefully eventually they'll do that. They'll take this figure and they'll release it in like a two-pack or something like him and Koba with okay, normal cool. faces. That would be neat. Mm -hmm. um, articulation wise, I really like the way these figures move. Mm -hmm. um, some of the joints are a little bit tight and a little tough to, to get them moving. Like the sh elbows are a little tough to move and right. the, the hips are a little tough to move. But I do like that they're not flopping all over the place. You know, yeah. that there is a, a good amount of movement to them still without it being ridiculously blah, 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 yeah. you know what I mean? Like flopping all over the place. And the paintwork, I think, is phenomenal. Yeah. Dude, really look is. how good that looks. Same with the really old good. ones? Yeah. The old, oh, I'm not sure if they could see it or not. Yeah, in the case back there. Um, yeah, I don't. I, I think the paintwork is great, but especially on these war paint ones, because it really looks like skin with the paint over it, and like the fur with the paint over it. It doesn't look like this is just a painted on there, and it, right. it just really feels like there's layers to it. Um, what did you say, bud? Nothing. Oh, okay. Um, and I, I, when I was taking pictures of this figure, and I was looking at the pictures back, I'm like, man, that almost looks like the prototype. It's so well painted. And you don't often get that where a production figure looks like almost as good as the prototype, well, you know? It's NECA, so. It's NECA. NECA, knocks, NECA yeah. kills it, man. I mean, they're, they're doing great they're stuff. They're really the best modern toy line right now. They, without a doubt, are. They get the best licenses. They put out the best product. NECA is the best mass market toy manufacturer, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Well, she likes it, but... Um, so, overall, I really love this Caesar. Um, I don't mind the fact that he's got the war paint just because... He was war paint in the beginning when they were right. doing the hunt, and when they showed up the city, he had the war paint. Uh, so I, I'm cool with him having the war paint, and I understand uh, that they wanted to do something different for the non-war paint with the different head sculpt right. and stuff. But as far as Caesars go, I actually prefer this one because of that kind of more solemn head sculpt. Oh, I thought um, you were just meaning design in general. I wasn't sure if you were meaning toy or not. Were you mean toy? Either one. Well, in general, I'd prefer normal. 
this paint job really and the head sculpt so I really prefer this you prefer the, the Caesar yeah uh, what do you think Keats uh, um, what toy well, which what do you think do you like this Caesar uh, for a uh, toy wise do you like this Caesar better or the screaming Caesar better um, that's Caesar face, but I don't want to have the uh, war paint. Don't want to have the war paint. But, uh, I mean, if you had to pick one of those two figures, which one would have. you like? That I could have? Yeah. If you only have one. I know you're going to collect them all because you're the ape collector. I'd probably go with the um, Caesar with the screaming face. Just have a regular Caesar? That way you can use it for both movies, too, I'll bet. Um, so, very cool. Very cool figure. Uh, digging. Awesome. Uh, they're, I think they're like 19 bucks if you can still find him in stores, but he's Series 1, so he's getting kind of tough now. Um, we just saw that at Toys R Us. We did see him yeah, at Toys R Us, yeah. yeah. Well, I think they were okay. shipping, for a while there, I think they, they were shipping entire cases of Caesar. That's what some rumor online was, that they were shipping that entire cases of Caesar like during the time of the movie coming out, so maybe there's still some of those cases floating around. Entire yeah. cases. Where it's nothing but him in the case, and no other figures. In what case? Like the shipper case, where they ship a box to a store. Oh, nothing but Caesar? Yeah, and I don't know if that's the case or not. Right. That was a rumor online. I don't know if it's true. I wouldn't have liked that. Because you like the other guys, too. I like the, uh, um, it wouldn't be a movie. Um, you couldn't play with them, really, because you have... Oh, you have a Caesar. 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 Yeah. You need more than just Caesar, but I understand that he's the most popular character of the line. Well, yes. Man, this sculpt is great. The more I, know, I look yes. at it, the more I'm just like, man, that is killer. Like, NECA... Almost, like, just about everything they do is really... Really great stuff. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. Um... The only thing I'm bummed about is that maybe it's going to end after these two series. I really the Dawn hope. line. I would love if Rocket got made. That's what or I was saying. Eyes. Rocket, Blue Eyes, and maybe Ash. Ash. Yeah, that would be cool. All right, so we're going to sign off on this one. If you want to hit the info section, you can check out a gallery of pictures of Caesar um, and uh, see if you think you may want to pick this figure up. Right? I would recommend it highly. I just, Super cool figure. I just ordered my non war pin one off Amazon. Yeah, exactly. You're, uh, you're, you had some Amazon cash, and yeah. so you bought one of those off Amazon. Um, Alright, so we're going to sign off on this one, and we'll yep. see you guys next time. Bye.